Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. What is the probability of selecting an 8 followed by a 9 from a deck of 52 cards if the first card is not replaced? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's just take one more look at the problem. So obviously, we are dealing with a deck of cards, which is always fun. Hopefully, uh, most of you out there like playing cards. Uh, but what we're dealing with here is a probability problem. Okay, so you have to know something about probability. And if you don't know anything about probability, we'll stick around. I'll teach you basic probability, and of course, we'll answer this question. But the question is the following, right? So we're looking for the probability of selecting an eight from this deck of 52 cards. Then we're going to um, try to get a nine, right? So what is the probability of selecting an eight followed by a nine from a deck of 52 cards if the first card is not replaced. And we're not trying to get a nine, we are going to get a nine, but there's two events going on here, okay? So we have the probability of getting an eight and then the probability of getting a nine. That's a little bit of a clue, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following, four over six, six, three. This fraction right here is the correct answer. And if you have a decimal equivalent, of this, well, that is fantastic because that indicates to me that you know a thing or two about probability, and we have to celebrate by giving a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of dependent events. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. And probability is a huge topic in mathematics. Matter of fact, it is generally a full course probability and statistics. So uh, don't feel bad if you weren't able to figure this out. It's not that difficult, but what we're talking about here is two events. One event is actually dependent upon the other. So we this is what we call a dependent event probability situation. So if you didn't know that, no big deal, but uh, hopefully you'll find the solution to this problem and interesting. And if you didn't understand this, well, you'll be looking like this person in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay. So first things first, first, we have this math word problem. Always use the rule of three. Read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Now, in this particular case, uh, we could see that we're looking for uh, the probability of something, right? So if you don't know anything about probability, well, you're not going to be able to do this problem. But uh, we kind of have to model out what's going on here, okay, in terms of, all right, there are two events, and we're trying to find the probability of these two events occurring. So we have to think about probability in terms of different types of probability. There's simple probability, there's mutually exclusive events, there's dependent events. So again, a big topic. Uh, you know, probability is a huge topic. So, and there's a lot of different type of subsets of uh, probability that you need to study. So no big deal if you didn't figure out what type of probability, but let's go ahead and just start to review some of these basic concepts so we can understand this problem better. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with just simple probability. All right, so for those of you that have been away from math for some period of time, this is simple probability, which most of you probably can uh, intuitively, you know, figure out just using kind of common sense. So the way we like to write probability in uh, math is this, right, uh, this way right here. So let's suppose we have a jar full of uh, four colored marbles. One is yellow, one is red, one is blue, and one is green. Okay, and we want to find the probability of randomly selecting um, one marble. Uh, from this jar and that marble being red. Okay, so what's the probability of that happening? 
So most of you could probably say, all right, well, there's one red, there's four marbles here. It's, you got a one out of four chance, and you would be absolutely correct. But probability is measured between zero and one. Now, oftentimes we think of probability or the chances of something happening in terms of percent, like there's a 60 or 70% chance of rain. So that's the word chance, where I'm saying the chance and probability, again, formally, it's a number, a value between zero and one, where zero is it's absolutely never not going to happen. And one, uh, if the probability is equal to one, that is guaranteed 100% it's going to happen. But I'll, I'll show you a little bit more what I'm talking about here in a second. Let's just go ahead and define simple probability right now. Okay, so the probability of getting a red is one over four. But what is the formal definition of probability? Well, it's basically this. So what is the number of ways we can get a red out of this jar or select a red? Well, there's one uh, way that event can happen, okay? So this is the definition of probability. So the probability of an event occurring is the number of ways that event could occur, okay? So in this case, there's only one way. Uh, there's only one possible red here that we can select. So there's only one uh, event or one way to get a red. Okay, but how many total possible um, outcomes are there? Well, there's four. We can get a red, we can get a yellow, we can get a blue, and we can get a green. So this is the total number of events. And that is uh, def uh, the definition of basic simple probability. So it's the number of ways that event could occur over the total possible outcomes. So to draw a red here, there's one way out of four possible outcomes. So the probability is one over four or 0.25, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So here is our jar, but now we have some more marbles in here. So let's go ahead and consider the same problem. So what's the probability of getting a red? Well, now we have to go ahead and count how many reds we have here. Well, there's one, two, three, four, and we're talking about selecting one marble out of here that's red. So how many ways could you select a red marble? Well, we have four different ways that event could occur, okay? Well, how many total uh, possible events could happen? Well, we have four here, but then we have six other marbles right here. So there's 10 possible outcomes, all right? So again, simple probability. So that, uh, the, this event, getting a red, could happen, happen four different ways out of 10 different possible outcomes. So in this case, the probability would be four over 10 or two fifths. All right, so again, probability is a number between zero and one. And you can see this fraction right here is less than one, but it's greater than zero. And we could take two fifths and turn that into a decimal and take that decimal and turn that into a percent. So that would be 40%. Okay, so there would be a 40% chance of getting a red or selecting a red from this jar of marbles. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. And you gotta understand simple probability before you can get into uh, more inter interesting stuff in terms of probability like dependent events or mutually exclusive events. So let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. All right, now uh, this problem is dealing with cards. And if you never played cards, well, I suggest that you start to learn how to play cards. One of my favorite games uh, with cards, it's actually not regular cards, is Uno. Uh, I just love playing Uno, playing it for a long, long time. And uh, just a little side um, uh, note here, uh, for those of you that like Uno, and if you like Uno, put that into the comment section. But I came across a video on when Uno was released, okay, this card game. And I think it was like the year 1972. So it's been around for some time, but not forever. Of course, uh, regular card games like poker and stuff have been around forever. But if you never uh, played a card game like Solitaire, well, let me just tell you very uh, briefly about a standard 52 deck of cards. Because if you don't understand cards, well, you're not going to be able to understand this problem. All right, now most of you out there, I'm pretty sure, uh, know this. So in this particular um, problem, we're talking about selecting an eight and selecting a nine. Okay, so in a deck of cards, 52 deck of cards, we have these things right here, which are called what? These are the suits of uh, cards, right? So here we can have an eight of diamonds or a nine of hearts. So how many different eights are in this deck? Well, there'll be one, two, three, four, right? So there's a, a diamond, a spade, a club, and a heart. Same thing for the nine, 
Okay, so just in case you didn't know that, you have to understand uh, this aspect of the problem or you won't be able to do the math to figure out the right answer. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take the next step and get into uh, uh, thinking about this now. Not that we have an understanding about uh, these uh, uh, standard 52 deck of cards. We know that we have uh, these four suits for each card. Now let's go ahead and read the problem again and think about this. And so the question is, what is the probability of selecting an eight followed by a nine from a uh, deck of 52 cards if the first card is not replaced? Okay, so there's two events here. So we're going to select, uh, we're going to select a card and we're going to want to see what the probability of selecting an eight is. And then after that, we're going to uh, select another card and see what the probability of getting a nine is from the remaining cards. Okay, so what we're talking about here, again, is two events, all right? And this is the way you solve probability um, problems. Uh, is you really have to think about, or a little bit more interesting probability problems, other uh, problems other than simple probability, because obviously we have two events going on here. So we have to think of it in, in, in terms of this way. So what's the probability of getting an A? Okay, when we consider this problem, we have 52 cards. Then we want to consider, okay, what is the probability of nine? But we're not going to replace that first card. So how many cards do we have when we consider the probability of a nine? Well, that's 51 cards, okay? So this event here is gonna be uh, influenced by this first event. And that type of situation in probability is called dependent events. And this is the formula for dependent events. Now, don't let this confuse you, it's not that difficult, but here it is, and let me explain it right now. All right, so the probability of A and B occurring, so there's two events here, A and B, is equal to the probability of A, now of course we already know how to figure out simple probability, that's what we're talking about, times the probability of B given that A has occurred. Okay, so let me uh, read this again. So dependent events, right? So we have two events where one event is affected by uh, the outcome of that second event is affected by the uh, outcome of the first event, right? Or influenced by the first event. So the probability of these two events, A and B, is equal to the probability of A, okay, that's our simple probability, times the probability of B that, again, we're multiplying here, we're multiplying these probabilities. Um, uh, so the probability of A times B is equal to probability of A times the probability of uh, B given that A has occurred. So in this situation, A is when we, um, you know, uh, select our eight from our deck of 52 cards, and then B is the probability of getting a nine with the 51 cards remaining. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. So now let's go ahead and take this step, which is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your help, okay? And I'm not shy to ask for it. And uh, if you need help in math, you shouldn't be shy to ask for it uh, as well. Now, if you don't like asking, you know, if you're just a little bit, you know, by nature shy, that's perfectly okay. So that's why I make these videos. My videos, as a matter of fact, I'm up to well over 2,500 plus math videos over a span of 10 plus years. And, uh, you know, I do this material because I love teaching math, but you know, it's no good to be a teacher unless you have students to teach to. And the only way I can grow my virtual classroom is having people like yourself subscribe. So definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, now one quick comment here before we finish up. If you are uh, in need of help in terms of probability and statistics, because generally uh, those two uh, courses or uh, topics go to uh, together, I teach, um, uh, these topics in my various courses. You'll find this in my pre-algebra course uh, at the pre-algebra level, my Algebra 1 course, my Algebra 2 course, and my pre-calculus course. So I teach probability and statistics at uh, these various levels 
you know, uh, in these courses at various uh, more advanced levels, obviously, if we're talking about pre-calculus, because you got to get into things called permutations and combinations, which are much more advanced. So anyways, if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, you can check that out. And by the way, if you're not even a math student, but you want to just learn more about probability and statistics, check out my math skills rebuilder course. You can find links to all this stuff in the description. Okay, so let's go, and get, go ahead and get back to this problem. And I think now most of you, uh, you know, can understand uh, or, you know, should be able to understand, hopefully, if I've done a decent job teaching this stuff, what we're going to be doing. Okay, so we have dependent events. This event here is dependent upon the outcome of this event. So the probability of uh, events, um, probability of dependent events happening is, is going to be a product. It's going to be multiplication. So what we're going to do first is figure out what, what is the probability of getting eight out of 52 cards, and then we're not replacing a card, so we'll figure out what the probability of getting a nine is out of 51 cards. And now that we understand a thing or two about cards and the suits of cards, how many ways can you get an eight out of a deck of 52 cards. Remember, uh, we're talking about simple probability. Well, there's four different ways that event could occur. Well, we're selecting one card here, right? So you can have an eight of diamonds, an eight of spades, whatever the case is. So you have four ways that event can occur out of 52. Now, we're not replacing um, this card, right? So now we're gonna go for a nine here. So uh, we don't have 51, uh, 52 cards, now we have 51 cards, one less, right? So how many ways can we get a nine out of 51 cards? Well, there's four nines remaining, right? Because we just pulled an eight out of the deck. So there's going to be four out of 51, uh, you know, these are your odds of getting a nine out of these 51 cards, four out of 51, right? We're getting eight is four uh, over 52. Okay, so now we have to be thinking about dependent events. So the probability of A and B happening where A and B are dependent events is going to be the product of the first, okay? So this is the probability of getting an eight out of all the cards in the deck, and then we're just gonna multiply by the probability of getting a nine with one less card, so we'd have 51 uh, cards. So this uh, simple uh, uh, fraction multiplication problem is all we need to do to figure out the answer. So let's go and do that right now. So four times four, of course, is 16. 52 times 51 is 2652. And if you uh, do your due diligence, you should be able to reduce this fraction to four over 663. Okay, so again, probability, a huge, very important topic in mathematics. And uh, I would suggest that, you know, all of you out there learn as much as you uh, can about probability and especially statistics uh, because it just serves you so well, especially, you know, when you're trying to understand the world around you. I mean, things like the news or the financial news when they're using uh you know, descriptions of, hey, uh, median home sales, okay? Most people don't uh, confuse the word median with uh, mean, which is the average, and these are totally different. So the more math you understand, uh, particularly like statistics and probability, the better off you're going to be understanding your world. Plus, it's just interesting. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.